I'm Bill Beal. Um, after 31 years of being a college professor at Virginia Tech, uh, I've retired and get to spend more time working with Gardner Angus Ranch. I've actually been associated with Gardner since 1988. For reproductive physiologists like me, this is the perfect place uh, to come to try to do some things that can help improve reproductive efficiency. With a total AI and embryo transfer program and over 2,000 head of cattle uh, here to breed in the fall breeding season, uh, we can accomplish a lot when it comes to trying to improve reproductive efficiency. And that's really been a focus in the Gardner Angus Ranch program. One of the really key elements uh, of the program here to try to improve reproductive efficiency has been the development of a database program where we can track all the breeding information. Um, it's built on a Microsoft Access uh, platform and what it allows us to do, this year for example we've charted oh, 1989 total artificial insemination attempts and I think a total of 1126 embryo transfers uh, just during the fall uh, breeding season. By keeping track of these and knowing, for example, that our AI pregnancy rate right now is running at 64.2%, we can break it down by technician or by age of the animals being bred um, or by uh, sires that we use in our AI program to keep track of how the program's going as we go through the breeding season. This really allows us to head off some problems before they really um, get to be a, a major factor. And I think over the last 10 years that we've had the program has really worked to keep us focused on trying to maximize reproductive efficiency, but also letting us solve some problems before they become big problems uh, in this program. When you're looking for tools to try to improve reproductive efficiency in Angus cattle, I think one of the best thing that's come around in the last mm, seven, eight years has been the development of heifer pregnancy uh, EPDs. The heifer pregnancy EPD program was started in 2007 um, by the staff members at the uh, Angus Association, primarily Sally Northcutt and Bill Bowman and others. And it started out just as a research project to see if in fact we could collect enough data in the breed to be able to come up with a genetic value uh, that would, could be used as a tool for improving reproduction uh, within the breed. After the initial um, research where they really just put out heifer pregnancy EPDs for sires, the program has expanded and now there are heifer pregnancy EPDs on every animal uh, that you can get, every registered animal that you can get a pedigree uh, for. The what heifer pregnancy tries to do is predict the likelihood of a heifer becoming pregnant sometime during her first breeding season. And to be able to determine heifer pregnancy EPDs, it depends upon the data that's turned in by breeders, just like us or, or other Angus breeders around uh, the country. In fact, the database has grown to be about 40,000 records strong right now. That's 40,000 sounds like a lot. But that's less than one-fifth, for example, of the records that we get for weaning weight or yearling weight. So it's still a relatively small database. It needs data. Uh, Gardner Angus Ranch bought into this concept of trying to develop heifer pregnancy and then use it as a selection tool early on. Over the last nine years, we've turned in 4,826 heifer matings uh, from our total AI program. With the 40,000 total, that means we've turned in about 12.3% of all the data that the Angus Association has to determine heifer pregnancy. We feel good about doing our part, um, but we're hoping that other breeders get more involved so that we can build this database and improve the accuracy associated with heifer pregnancy uh, EPDs. Often, uh, when people talk to us about our, our reproduction program uh, here, they say, well, how do you use heifer pregnancy EPD in your, in your selection program? Well, the first thing you have to do is remember what heifer pregnancy EPD represents, and that is, it, it's not a fertility uh, EPD uh, about conception rate per se, not just one element uh, of reproduction. It's a heifer's likelihood of becoming pregnant um, during the entire first normal breeding season uh, that she goes through. You also have to remember that the heritability of heifer pregnancy is only 13%. That 
That means that 13% of the variation in when a heifer becomes pregnant is due to genetics but that 87% of the variation in when a heifer becomes pregnant is due to management factors that you and I control or environment or things that are not uh, genetics related. And as, as compared to the growth EPDs that are much higher in heritability, around 40% uh, or even up to 50% in, in terms of some stature uh, type EPDs, the low heritability means that we shouldn't put too much emphasis on heifer uh, pregnancy EPD. By the same token, it's the only tool we have um, in our selection program to try to enhance reproduction. So I think the strategy that's used by most breeders and, and by folks here is that we try to focus on those bulls that we use in the AI program that are clearly above average in heifer pregnancy EPD. But, and, and if we have a choice between two different bulls that have the right EPDs for other economically important traits, we're gonna go with the bull that has a higher heifer pregnancy EPD because his daughters are gonna be more likely to have a high hef uh, heifer pregnancy EPD and breed earlier uh, in their first uh, breeding season, at least uh, for what we control, control with their uh, genetics. The result is, that's what we've done over the years, and the result is, for example, in this year's spring sale where we'll sell over 300 head of uh, heifers, those heifers average plus 12 for heifer pregnancy EPD. That puts them in the top 10% uh, of the Angus breed for heifer pregnancy EPD. So we feel like by emphasizing, but not overemphasizing the use of heifer pregnancy EPD, we're moving the bar slowly, okay, to try to improve fertility in those heifers that we develop here and that we sell to other folks uh, in, in the spring sale. One final thought about heifer pregnancy EPD that I, I can't overemphasize. If you remember the fact that heifer pregnancy EPD is only has a heritability of 13%, uh, that means that 13% is due to genetics, but 87% of the variation in when a heifer becomes pregnant, or if she becomes pregnant during her first breeding season is due to environmental factors and management factors. We're talking about things like heifer development programs, do they reach the age and the weight that they need to be at prior to the beginning of the breeding season? Um, age at puberty is a critical um, factor. Then how long is the breeding season? What's the bull stocking rate if you're in a natural service situation? Or what's the AI program like if you're using synchronization uh, and AI? All those factors make up that 80%, 87% of the variability that's associated with heifer pregnancy. So we can't forget that management and environment are just as big a factor, in fact, a larger factor than selection for heifer pregnancy. We can make genetic improvement in fertility of heifers uh, and getting them bred in their first breeding season, but we're gonna do that slowly uh, through the use of heifer pregnancy EPD. And we'll only see those gains if we do the other things right in terms of management and heifer development.